Hi, I'm Stacy. I have lived alone with my mom since my sister went to college a few years back. I never knew my dad, all my memories of him were from pictures or what I was told about him. I really didn't mind, my sister was my whole word before she left for college. Recently, I have had problems with boys. No guy wanted to date me for a week at the most. The guys just wanted to get intimate with me. And ditch me. At first, I thought I was the one ditching them. But now I realized I was the one being played. I couldn't take this anymore. I demanded a change, and I am trying to fix things at all costs. Things shouldn't continue like this. This is my story. This is how it began. I was the hottest girl in school. I dated as many guys as I wanted. Or should I say the guys dated me long enough as they wanted. I thought it was all about me until I realized. I wanted to make my sister's version of high school for myself. My sister, Brielle, was my best friend. She was only because she filled my head with how he dated a guy and ditched him. How another became a crybaby because of her. How Vic knelt down in the dome just to go watch a movie with her. And some other cool stuff. Don't be deceived, Brielle is way better than me. My mum said she took after our aunt, who lives in Dallas. I am just my mum's daughter. Even though I possess more prominent curves, both hind and rear, Brielle is still a babe to behold. I would have taken all her stories to be myths, but they were evident. Most of the time, when mum was off to the office, Brielle came home with different guys, and she didn't repeat one twice. Never except for Drew. I could tell the reason myself, that guy was huge and muscular. Maybe he hit the gym regularly because the packs on his abdomen are well packed. Drew is the kind of guy every woman fantasizes about. Right from grade 8. I had been planning myself to achieve more than Brielle. She was my role model. But I wanted to reset the pace. It went well, just as I had planned and I can tell I learned from the best. Brielle was damn good. I started with Stuart. Stuart was just the kind of guy you can call the victim of everyone. Straightforward to prey on. That day was my day to be a predator. And lo, the perfect target had started eyeing me. It was easy for me to find out this boy would die to find his way into me. I noticed this. Yet I was playing hard to get. I did winkle at him whenever I caught him staring. But he was one of those boys who really needed a motivational speaker to kill a cockroach. He was my perfect victim. And I was waiting like a cat at the end of the hole to devour the rat. We were at Hudson's party that night. Hudson wasn't really celebrating anything. In fact, no one knew his birthday because he throws a party every Friday. All Hudson needs to throw a party is his parents absent from home. I was trying to get a cocktail glass when I caught Stuart sitting on the sofa behind me. He was busy gazing at my behind while his friends were doing the talking. I don't think Stuart was really interested in the discussion. He saw himself in me. Who won't want to get their hands on those vast backsides? You can't blame the innocent boy who doesn't know the kind of problem he was about to get into. I winkled at him as I usually do, and I was moving from the living room towards the direction of the rooms. I looked back to see if he would follow, but he was resting his back on the sofa and his friend saying things to his head this time. He got up and walked in my direction. Finally, he had been motivated. He followed me and took all the corners I took. He bumped onto me, he said sorry and started shaking in his voice. I placed my hand on his head to calm his nerve. I know you like me, I whispered to his ear. I put his hands on my chest. He couldn't believe what was happening. I squeezed his hand on my chest. He looked at my face in astonishment. I bit the corner of my lips. His hands were vibrating on my chest. I opened the door and dragged him in while I gave him the kiss of his life. I could depict that he was a novice, but I played along nicely. That was what I had been doing since. Acting. 
I lay on the bed and encouraged him to come over to me. Before we started the scene, the lucky man got lucky earlier than expected. I smiled, I wasn't really interested in him. I was just teasing him. And the little guy fell for the awaiting bait. Before noticing my smile, I pushed him off me and gave him a straight face making him uncomfortable. He pleaded for the release earlier. I could tell the guy was disappointed, but who cares? Right. I found my way out of the room and smashed the door behind me, proving that I was really angry with him. He jumped after me and pulled my hand from behind and apologized. I didn't consider his apology a bit. Give me another chance, please. This time you won't be disappointed, he pleaded. Yes, he fell for the next trap. I said to myself. Okay, no problem. I snapped. I dragged him to the dance floor downstairs. I purposely stayed in the middle of the stage to call for attention which I got. I placed Stuart's hands on my buttocks and added pressure on the hand so that he could squeeze those cheeks. Stuart raised up his head, feeling he was on top of the world. After a while, I perceived his hand vibrating on my buttock. I turned around, positioned my buttock between his two legs, and placed his hand over my chest. We danced to the loud music. I increased the intensity by stroking up and down on his laps with my backside. Within a few minutes, and can feel his wet pant on my mini skirt. I turned around at once. What is the meaning of this? I said aggressively. Everyone looked at us and quickly found out what had happened. Everyone started laughing at Stuart. He was ashamed of himself and ran out of the party, trying not to cry. I had a bizarre smile on my face. One down, many more to go. I said to myself. I watched him leave and continued dancing. I got the attention I needed that night. I knew I had laid the first brick. And now it would be easier for me to catch more fish in my cunny net. I didn't tell my sister on the phone about the news. I wanted to be perfect before proclaiming myself. On my checklist of naughtiness, the next and most preferential thing to do is change my friends. I needed to start walking with the most incredible, hottest, and sweetest girls in school. I was not a fan of doing things gradually. I wanted to move with the speed of a power horse. Had I known, I would have taken the stairs instead of the elevator. The second day at school, I was a different Stacy. My friends couldn't understand, so they left me alone with my madness. I caught the attention of everyone. Even Mr. Collins, the history teacher, who won't fall for the girl that purposely walked within the school premises like Lady Gaga with the shape of Angelina Jolie and the face of Nicki Minaj. The focus of the school just changed from outstanding academic records to having an intimidating moment with me. Hello, girly, a voice standing next to my desk said. I knew that voice was Britney's the head of the Beatles, a group that had been terrorizing the school with their stony beauty. Hi Brittany, I said with the sweetest voice possible. I raised my head to look at her face. She handed me a sheet of paper and left. That's normal, what else did I know Brittany for? She's rude. I opened the article to read what was written. Atlas Corner. Cinema Stall Room, 4 p.m., Don't Be Late, Love from Brittany was written jaggedly on the piece of paper. I grinned a little. Yes, I said to myself. Mission accomplished. I could not concentrate any more in class. I was eager to meet my new friend. The Beatles. I get on rationalizing how the crew will start doing things with me involved. The numbers of boys that will ask me out in a day. The guys I will pretend I am interested in just to embarrass them and so many other naughty and rude kinds of stuff finding their feet in my mind. I tried getting them away from my mind, but they remained stalked. Since I could not help it, I kept on enjoying the fantasy. Immediately I heard the bell. I took my things, trying hard not to rush since that was my usual self. I got my bag, this time. 
I had a handbag instead of the typical scotch bag. I headed straight to the cinema stall room behind the theater. I followed Brittany's direction by heart. I got to the meeting point. I never knew that place could be that dark and dusty. I saw the light at the end of the little passage. I walked through different artistries to the light. And I tried not to drop anything, which would have been a mess. I got to where I saw the ray. Behold, Lucy and Pinky. Those two were a pain in the ass, so annoying and disrespectful. I checked my wristwatch. It was 3.52 p.m. Wow. I didn't get late to my induction party. I whispered to myself. Hello, ladies, I greeted the two girls. They did not respond nor show any gesture. It was as if I was not there. The two girls glued their faces on their phones and kept laughing and talking. Those two are good at keeping each other's company. Since I had been ideally ignored, I got myself a wooden box and made myself comfortable. Pinky looked at me as if she would say something impish, but instead continued with her gist. I brought out my phone and started checking my emails. That wasn't necessary because I wanted to while away the time while I longed for the arrival of Brittany. Finally, Brittany showed up. I checked my time to know the exact time. It was 4 p.m. on the dot. God, the girl, is punctual. At last, she got that virtue. She wasn't all bad anyway. Before I could stand to greet her, the two older girls surrounded her and took a few shots with their phones. After the supposed greeting, she introduced me to the group. That was really unnecessary since we were all classmates. But I played along with it anyways. Will you like to be a beetle? Brittany asked. I was shocked with nothing to say. But inside I was euphonious. I tried to be the tough girl they thought I was. You're wasting time asking me. I'm here already. Brittany smiled beautifully. I like this girl, she said while pointing her index finger towards me. Straight away, the two other girls started talking to me. They told me unique pieces of stuff. I wasn't intrigued, nor was I surprised by their sudden change of attitude. It was acting. And I know for sure that I just got enrolled into the school of acting. The girls helped me with all my social media accounts. Posted my picture everywhere. I took a couple of photos later uploaded. And boom, my followers started increasing. I couldn't believe that. It was as if the followers had been waiting for that moment to come to their whole life. I was introduced to some rules on how to operate flawlessly in the group. The regulations, in summary, be rude and naughty. Isn't that why I took the appointment? Life just got more straightforward or rather terrible. Only time will tell. Everything was going according to plan. I now walked with the most popular group in school and dated some big boys. The one for me was that I became the most sought after in school just a few weeks after joining the Beatles. Lucy and Pinky were getting jealous, but couldn't do much since Brittany was okay with it. I knew but didn't care. For me, I am yet to achieve my goal. No one had knelt down for me yet. Within a month after my induction, I started going out with Frank. Frank was from a wealthy family. I never knew his old man, but I heard the man is the chief executive officer of a tech company. Well, without doubt. I believe because Frank did brag about his father's achievement. All he had of himself were gargets and more gargets. The relationship was so dull. The guy was just too direct. All he thinks of is what lies under my panties. Such a naughty dude. I managed to play along with the supposed relationship. Frank had so much luxury stuff and went out with rich kids like him. He was fond of me, he showed me off to his friends every time as if I was a priceless antique to be auctioned. Though he was proud, this dude knows how to spoil a lady. I made sure my mum didn't know about my relationship with Frank. She wouldn't have supported the union. Frankly speaking, what kind of single mum will help such? Her ignorant is the best for me. I had more mischievous plans to pull. 
Frank had a party with his wealthy friends and decided to take me along one of those days. I saw this as a significant opportunity to pull the ditching string. I told my mum that I would be sleeping over in my friend's place. She agreed. I took off one of my beautiful dresses and a heel to match. And off I went. I stopped at Brittany's place to change into the gown. I called Frank and told him to come and pick me at Brittany's home. A few hours had gone, and finally, the lover boy showed up. I exchanged kisses and told him that Brittany would love to tag along with us. I made that up because I knew what Brittany was capable of. No problem, he said. While Brittany was getting changed, Frank and I were in the living room sharing a romantic moment. Brittany came down from her room. She caught us in the moment, she coughed, and the two of us detached in a hurry. Frank led us to a black limo waiting outside Brittany's house. Inside the limo, Frank was actually a pompous host. I didn't mind because he is notorious for that. Brittany, on the other hand, was just present physically. Since Frank handed her a glass of champagne, she had been with her phone. Sometimes it looks like that is her real world. And here it is, virtual. Frank and I tried to make chemistry. But it wasn't perfect since the two of us had a different reason for dating each other. And love is omitted. I was dating him because he is rich and famous. And I needed such a feat to prove myself in this new game I play. Frank was dating me because he just wanted to show his friends that he could catch big fish. The limo stopped at the entrance of a five-star hotel. The driver opened the door with Brittany steeping out first. Then Frank, who helped me by taking my hands. It was like a fairy tale. So, many reporters were present. There were camera flashes everywhere. Brittany was eager to face the crowd to earn more popularity while Frank waved at them. But I was able to hide my face perfectly. My mum mustn't see such things. It was a grand entry to be candid. I met several children of vibrant personnel in the state. Every person was VIP. The first time I enjoyed such a feat. Everything was going on smoothly. Brittany had succeeded in entangling herself with another boy. She disappeared with the new guy. I guess someone went to get dirty. I couldn't do much. I purposely made sure Brittany was here so that I could pull a perfect trick. But now she's nowhere to be found. Actually, I enjoyed myself. It was an elaborate get-together. I got everything I never tasted by just demanding. The party was going on fine while I was looking for an opportunity to create a scene. Finally, Brittany was back in the room. And Frank was busy chatting with his friends about their most expensive possession. How is that a discussion? I really didn't fit in too much. But Brittany fitted in perfectly. The girl is Tiffany in the making. Such a good actress I must oblige. The moment had finally come. I saw a glass of red wine with Frank. He was about to turn back when I rushed towards him, making him spill the wine on the silver white dress I wore. What have you done? I retorted. It was a perfect first attack. He tried to draw me away from his friends and pleaded with me for the spillage. I pushed him back. You ruined my dress. I shouted at him. Still trying to avoid the disgraceful moment. He wanted to draw me from the crowd. I slapped him, where did that boldness come from? I couldn't believe I could do that. I was terrified within me, but yet every bit of my plan was coming to play in the perfect order. Just the way I wanted it. Brittany, doing what she knew how to do best, had started live streaming. Then the rich man's kid apologized. I am very sorry, I didn't mean to spill the wine on your dress. You should understand that it was an accident. Accident? I ruined my dress. And you said it was an accident, I barked. The rich kid went down on his knees and apologized. I got a glass of wine and poured the content on him. I regretted the action immediately. But the awesomeness on Brittany's face comforted me. Brittany and I left the party to her place. She praised me as if I had just conquered a gladiator. I wasn't pleased with myself. 
who does that? Brittany was full of my praise. Before I saw the video myself, she had uploaded it. I later found out when browsing with her personal computer later that night. To my surprise, so many people had shared it. I got to school. I looked around for Frank, though I wasn't planning to apologize. I just wanted to see him for no reason whatsoever. I could not find him anywhere. I couldn't send a call through. Hudson later blew the news. He had left the city for another country. At that moment, I knew that it was a game over. Times passed, then came Brad. Brad was a transfer student from another city. This boy was the kind of boy mama would be proud of. He looked older than his age. But after some research, the rest of the Beatles and I found out he is just 17. No, this can't be the truth. The guy looked so mature. Within the first few weeks in school, several girls had fought because of him. The Beatles were also in incoherence on this case. That will be the first time as far as I could recall. Every hot babe demands a hot guy. I guess. For the first in forever. Lucy, Pinky, and Brittany fought and never reconciled. I was still a great associate to Brittany while Lucy and Pinky enjoyed each other company. I wasn't interested in this guy because of his insane popularity. But having him for myself will significantly benefit me. It would increase my charm by miles. Hello, babe. That was Brittany by my desk. Everyone now sees us as best pals. Brittany was not to be trusted. That babe was a big snitch. She told me she approached Brad how she felt about him and Brad turned down her approach. I want revenge, she said. Well, that's what I was good at. No problem, I replied. I knew I was irresistible. Every high school can't afford to lose me once they are opportune. I started walking towards Brad. I wanted him to notice me, but frankly, the guy was tough. Later he fell. One afternoon, we met at the dome one afternoon. He bumped onto me accidentally. And my science project fell. He picked up the pieces and reassembled them as quickly as he could go. I was impressed. Can you have a cup of coffee with me? If you don't mind. I asked of him. I would rather have a bottle of beer with you at a bar. He responded. I smiled, I like this kind of guy. So, a date it is. I rejoined. We said our bye-byes. And the two of us went our separate ways. I chatted up Brittany immediately. She was amazed. And she drew her plan, it was a perfect plan and would make this big guy have a significant fall. Brittany is undoubtedly next to the devil in deeds. After the chat, I started having missed feelings. I wasn't so sure, but it was like I was beginning to like this dude. Brad is handsome, and to my experience, he is far from how Brittany described him. And everyone knows is that when Brittany said it is raining outside, you need to go and check for yourself. I decided to take note of this guy to see for myself. On Friday, Brad and I finally met at a bar to take some beers. The bartender didn't bother to ask for our age, judging by Brad's enormous stature. We got ourselves an empty sight and yakked away the whole time. The boy was amusing to be with. I got drunk, don't judge me. I don't drink. He got us a taxi and took me home. Most guys would have taken advantage of me that night. But he didn't. He dropped me at the door and introduced himself to my mum. I slept off on the couch. The following day was a weekend. I woke at noon. My mum gave me a spicy soup to drink. I took it. I was damn hungry. She set the table for lunch. And while we were taking the meal, most of the dining discussion was about Brad. It seemed my mum liked him. And so was I for the first time, I can say I am really interested in someone. Later that day, I called my sister. We chatted a lot. She told me that mum had told her about the whole thing. We both laughed about it. 
I said about the association between the Beatles and me and how we separated. She advised me to detach myself from such friendship. I knew she was right, and she was speaking from experience. But, I had gone deep into these things. I didn't know how to call it short anymore. Brad and I started seeing each other frequently. You could tell something was going on between the two of us. But there had not been any official proposal. So, friends are the best you could call this kind of thing. And for a while, I had not been on talking terms with Brittany. We were not in disagreement but just that we can't agree on a thing anymore. I started walking with my old friends. They had been waiting for me to get myself out of the madness I was in. You could tell that Brielle talked some sense into me. Brittany had noticed my lack of cooperation. And she had reconciled with the old Beatles members. Things just got worse for my companies and me. It was apparent that Brad only wanted to be a friend since his girlfriend regularly visited him from his previous school. I wasn't bothered, my friendship with him was worthwhile. Brittany tried to get to Brad, trying all her cunny moves. But I did give Brad a head start in the game. You could call me a snitch. It is fine, I am tired of seeing people get hurt. Most guys later found out that Brad and I were just friends. The long-awaiting suitors started coming up with their approaches. This time I was unnecessarily rude as I was. I realized I had been a bad bitch for so long. And many had been said about me. A lot of good people had been avoiding me. And I didn't notice. I was blindfolded by the things Brittany fed me with. My goal was to be popular and nothing more. I picked up so many lousy virtues on my way to fame. And my sister came out to be nicer than I taught. I was so much ashamed of the past few months. I received a few proposals and ignored the others. But none lasted for a month. With some lasting just a few days. I could get entangled with a guy today and tomorrow. He is no more interested in me. I was so much in need of a guy I could call my boyfriend. But to no avail. It was as if there was a famine of boys. No one lasted for at least a month. My hunt for a boyfriend increased. I refused to turn down people's approaches. But all ended within a short while. I told Brielle about this, she couldn't devise a means to solve the problem. I guessed she didn't know all too. I took up the courage to speak with Brad since we were good friends. I asked him what guys wanted in ladies. He couldn't give me a straight answer too. Even Stuart came knocking at the door again. This time, it looked like a payback. He ditched me before I even fell in love with him. What the hell is happening to me? It was as if the whole school planned to get back at me for my evil deeds. I needed a drastic change. I wanted things to go back to when I was that innocent beauty. I tried to redeem myself. Who am I to meet? Who is the head of these, or the whole school is just acting on this simultaneously? I could not figure out anything. I was confused. Who is behind all these? The Beatles and I had parted ways for a while now. We don't really exchange greetings. I really don't bother at first until recently. I had started thinking if they were involved in the dismay. This is what the group of girls is known for. And this is what they do best. They are better at tarnishing images than doing well in school. I started suspecting their moves and began to keep tags on them. Hunting them with their own skills. After several weeks of monitoring their movements, I could not take them red-handed even though all accusing fingers pointed at them. I started checking on my friends after a failed attempt on the beetle. They weren't shady, to be candid, but I didn't want to leave any stone unturned. Checking on them is really convenient since we are always together, but I can't predict their actions once they get home. I made it a habit to sleep periodically at their place. Even though they stayed up at night, it wasn't a reason to call the accused. After another futile effort, I thought of Brad. Can Brad stoop so low to that level? I don't know who to trust and who not to. 
I began another investigating job on him. I could tell the guy noticed my motive but did not care since he didn't find any reason for me to do that. For sure, he is not the one, but since he knows about what is going on, he is still a suspect but not prime. Brielle is the next on my list. She is miles away from home, but I can't afford to get her off the list. She called me more often than she did in the past. We shared more moments together and chatted a lot about our lives. Some about her school life and maybe fashion and some girls' talk. Things were smoother betwixt us. She had been my best friend in the past. But now I think she can make something up. But wait, why will she want to do me any harm? What will she gain from that? I am her little sister. And she is my whole world. Even if I tried to pop my nose in her matters. I could not do that well since she barely came home. She only comes on holiday. I don't know what to do and who to hold the victim. I don't like this period. I want to disappear from the surface of the earth before I become the laughing stock at school. Who can be involved in this evil act? Can it be the Beatles? My friends, Brad or Brielle? What do you think? You think? You think? You think? You think?